What's going on YouTube? Well, believe it or not, this is take number four. Phone ringing, me having hacking spells, screwing up, the whole nine yards. I've had uh, a few people ask if I would do an update video on my current handgun collection. So I thought, well, weather's crappy outside, of course, on a weekend. So I just figured I'd come down here and try and knock this out real quick. Well, it hasn't happened real quick, but I will get her done. Um, first one up on deck is a Glock 20. All these guns have been safety checked. Just to let you know, Glock 20 and 10 millimeter. I do have my Lone Wolf conversion barrel in it. That enables me to shoot 40 Smith & Wesson ammo out of this 10 millimeter gun. Um, as a lot of you I'm sure know, that 40 Smith & Wesson ammo is about half, half the cost of 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter itself is just not easy to come by anyway. Uh, I picked this up used from a buddy of mine who got orders to go overseas. He could not take his guns with him and he didn't have no family to give it to because they're all from Massachusetts and they're anti-gun and uh, so he just opted to sell them so I was lucky enough to be able to pick that up next is the Glock 27 chambered in 40 Smith & Wesson this was the very first handgun that I picked up when I did a revamp of my handguns back in October of 2009 um, I really didn't know a whole lot about Glock. I'd heard of Glock um, because I had been out of, of guns and handgunning in particular for so many years. Um, whenever I heard Glock, pretty much uh, negative thoughts came into my head because I just remember when they first came out, people talking about the plastic gun and they're a piece of junk and this and that. So I started doing my own research. I discovered YouTube. Um, I used to think YouTube was only for music. Uh, that's the only thing you could do on there is sit and watch music videos. Boy, did I soon discover that that's not correct. Thank God. So I started doing my own research on these Glocks and discovered that, you know what, I don't think them Glocks are bad like I had in my head. And obviously, no, they're not. Very, very good handguns. I've had phenomenal luck with this. I've put between two and three hundred rounds through it zero absolutely zero malfunctions issues no problems whatsoever next up is the Ruger SR9 compact this is chambered in nine millimeter this is the Ruger's answer to Glock essentially the baby Glocks this is their newer version uh, newer version as far as not like you know the old Ruger P85s, P89s. This is Ruger's more modern polymer framed small concealed carry quote unquote handgun. And this booger here is fantastic as well. It has a little lower price point than a Glock by about a hundred bucks. Um, I've put right at 200 rounds through this and it has performed great. It shoots very well, has nice sights. Uh, the trigger on it is very crisp. I like the trigger a lot. I'm able to shoot this very well. I would say about as well as my Glock 27. I'm not saying one's more accurate than the other, just my ability to shoot it and connect with the target. Um, shooting this is not a detriment over shooting a Glock or or anything else that I have here. So the Ruger SR9 Compact. This right here is my most recent pickup. This is the CAR CW9. Um, this is chambered in 9mm. This is a uh, beer budget version of their PM series, their MK series, their P series. You know, they have quite a few different series. They have guns that are all steel. They have, you know, polymer like this. But the thing that this has over those other ones is cost. The CW series 
is going to be around $200 less than what you're going to pay for their other lines. Now Carr did just release a CM series which is like the CW series, it's just smaller. The CM series is the, along the size of their PM which is you know two fingers on here it has very short as a six plus one capacity shorter barrel you know it's just a smaller gun um, but one thing I have to tell you all <coughs> of all these guns here as far as how it feels in the hand this gun right here feels the best to me the way it feels in my hand is just phenomenal I love the feel of it now this is a striker fired handgun but it's not like a Glock and what I mean by that is is the trigger pull on this is relatively long let's see if we can't pull this back see where that broke way back you know where a Glock would probably break right around in here you know right in here this one has to come all the way back but the trigger on this is very smooth it's not heavy and uh, I haven't had an opportunity to fire this yet I just picked this up last weekend at a gun show so I have high hopes for it um, all the reviews and stuff I'm seeing are really good I didn't know if I would like these combat sights tiny sights you know one dot over the other type thing I can't do this with the camera the way it is but you all get the picture one bar in the back and one dot up front lining those up I kinda like that so far I do think that I might be able to acquire that sight just a little bit quicker than a three dot but time will tell next up the Caltech PF9 this right here was purchased new about three four weeks ago um, I have quite the uh, story with the Caltech PF9 I had one that I had purchased some time back I sold it the same day that I sold my Ruger LCP that I used to have I sold both of those to get this which we'll get to here in a minute but uh, once I sold it after a few months I realized I made a mistake I wanted another one so I picked up a used one the used one and I didn't notice this when I was looking at it inexperienced looking at used guns but the, the slide on that used one was pretty loose it had quite a bit of rattle to it and a buddy of mine discovered that the rail on this side instead of it being symmetrical all the way across as it got toward the end kind of ramped up gave it some extra slop he has since he bought that used one from me and I went and bought this new one and he has since sent that into Caltech and I'll give you a follow-up at some point letting you know what Caltech did with it how their customer service was if they gave him any guff or any BS over taking care of that handgun but uh, <clears throat> A lot of people look at these Keltex as being like the quality of a Saturday night special, you know, a throwaway gun, whatever. I could not disagree with that more. Um, a buddy of mine's got Keltex. I know other people that have them. Um, my first Keltex that I had, I mean, the thing runs really, really well. Um, it's accurate, it's light, it's thin. Through good sights on it, good three dot sights. Uh, I, I do not think. I mean, yeah, people look at it and say, well, it's a $200 gun. Well, I haven't found one for $200, but you know, you got to look at it. You know, a $250, $260 gun versus, okay, if you want to go with a car or a Glock, you know, a Glock's going to run you five to five and a half. This car is going to run you you know whenever you're all said and done uh, up to around the mid fours Ruger SR9 the same way this is going to run you low to mid fours you know so with this you get a nine millimeter seven plus one capacity for two hundred fifty two hundred sixty dollars you know I think a lot of people look at that 
look at the gun and they don't think about that and they say, well, that thing's a piece of crap. Well, no, it's not a piece of crap. It's a damn good gun for the price you're paying for it. Moving on. Sig Sauer P238. I picked this up. I've seen this in a gun show. I'm sorry, a gun show, a gun shop. And I had looked at this <coughs> model back whenever I bought my LCP. And uh, that particular 238 was $600. And I just could not, at that point, I didn't know enough, you know. And I probably still wouldn't, 600 I just, I couldn't see spending $600 on a 380 I just couldn't do it. Well, after I got the LCP, and it had a very, very long, long trigger pull on it, just like the kel does, just like the car does, and I said, I don't like those kind of trigger pulls. Well, one thing about the LCP to me was is the trigger pull was kind of stiff. It wasn't real smooth. Um, the trigger pull on this car is very, very smooth, and it's not real heavy. And I just decided, bottom line, that it is something that I want to train with and I want to get used to. I don't want to limit myself to just like Strocker fired or uh, single action, you know, with a hammer like this. Okay. Now this, when it, I mean, you can only shoot it like this, single action. It does not give you double strike capability. But of course, in single action, the trigger on this is, is fantastic. But anyway, I sold my kel and my LCP to get the money to buy this. That's why I got rid of my first kel and the LCP. And do I regret getting this? Absolutely not. Great gun. I picked this one up for $499. Uh, when I seen that price tag, I about lost my mind, and I said, what do I got to do to get that? And that's what I did. Sold my Caltech and sold the LCP. Running out of time. Uh, <clears throat> this right here is a Ruger SP-101, 357 Magnum with a 2 and an eighth inch barrel, all stainless. I did change out the factory grips and put on the Hogue Mono Grip. Very good decision in my opinion. I think that this grip feels phenomenal. It feels really, really nice. Um, I have fired this. I'm not a real good shot with this. Um, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, the sights, the sights on this are just, you know, grooved out in, the, in here. I mean, the sights are not that great, but no excuses. I just need to practice with it. But Ruger SP-101 and 357 Magnum, uh, very, very nice. I like the, the short barrel on it and what have you. <clears throat> Last but not least, my very first Smith & Wesson, Smith & Wesson model 649 38 Special that is plus P rated. This is an all steel gun. Um, it has the classic grip as you can see. Uh, 1 and 7 eighths or a 2 inch barrel. I picked this up used. It does have the shrouded hammer. Uh, this pistol used to belong to a U.S. Treasury agent and he had a trigger job done on it and I can tell you that the trigger on this gun is phenomenal. Now I have been kind of polishing on it with some flits and uh, this other polish called Moss, M-A-A-S. I don't know how well this is going to show up but I absolutely love this little revolver. I, uh, this I can tell you is probably going to spend a lot of time in the safe. Um, it was made in 88. You cannot get this anymore. You can get a 649 today, but they're all 357s. Which, yes, you can shoot 38 out of it, but this is a true 38 special only model 649. And I think it's just gorgeous. So anyway, guys, I'm running out of time. I'm going to get this done. I'll have to redo it because I go over time. Um, this is the update. Minus my 22s and the Colt Python. Uh, this is what I have. I think next I'm going to be on the hunt for possibly a 1911. I could change my mind on that in the next two hours. So don't hold me to it. Appreciate all the comments. Thanks for watching. I appreciate the subs. Um, keep watching. Y'all take care. We'll see ya.